Hi there, my name is Blake and welcome to the third video on how to play 7D chess with multiverse time travel. This video will cover basic piece movements along with the rules for diagonal motions across a four dimensional board. We'll start by putting both of the kings on the board, one of them all the way down along the y and w axes and the other all the way up along the w and y axes. Bringing in the rook's move set from the previous video, we see that we have to move all the way along the w axis and all the way along the y axis to get to the enemy side. Since these do get us closer to the enemy side, we will call these forward directions. Note that moving backwards is simply moving negative times along a forward direction. Moving along the x and the z axes do not bring us any closer to the enemy side, so I will call these lateral motions. As a quick side note, we will call x lateral and z hyperlateral since it is an extra dimensional extension of x. Similarly, we'll call y forward and w hyper forward since it's simply an extension of y. Now that we've covered that, let's evaluate the bishop's moveset. In traditional chess, you could define the bishop's moveset as being an equal number of movements along exactly one horizontal direction and exactly one forward direction. Note that among other combinations, this prevents us from choosing forward once and then forward again and calling that a diagonal. Similarly, we couldn't choose forward and then negative forward or two lateral motions either. We'll simply follow that rule exactly as I've stated for two-dimensional chess. This means that moving forward and hyper-forward is not a valid diagonal. Additionally, we cannot choose two lateral motions as our diagonal either. With that in mind, let's begin constructing our full bishop's moveset. Our choices include a single motion forward, and then another motion in any of our lateral directions, a single direction hyper-forward, and then any of our lateral directions, and then an astute viewer will also recognize that many of these diagonals can be continued. Zooming in to see the pieces a little bit better, let's go ahead and examine the queen's motion. The queen is going to move identically to the bishop with the addition of the rook's move set. A king would be able to move in these same directions, however they'd only be able to move one set of squares at a time. Additionally, there is no rule for castling in 4D chess, as I do not want to imagine what a 4D castle looks like. Now we'll go ahead and strip out all of the motions except for the ones consisting of a single movement forward towards the enemy camp, and then one lateral direction. These exactly make up the movements a pawn can capture, so we'll mark those in red. Now we'll add in the forward motion and the hyper forward motion, and we get our full pawns moveset. Note that the pawn can only move one square at a time, even if it is in the location where it starts, since we're playing on a much smaller board, a 4x4x4x4. Four by four by four by four. Finally, we'll bring in the knight and construct its L-shaped movements. We can move once forward and then any lateral motion to move twice in. We can also move once hyper forward and make the same lateral motions. Finally, we can move twice along any forward direction we have space on, and then once in any lateral direction. And that is the full knight's moveset from its current position.